Welcome, everybody, to the Monday Night Tours. We are your guides on this journey through the Monday Night Wars. I am Josh Kaiser, and I'm joined today by Kyle Hoagland. Back in the saddle again, back in our multi-million dollar studio. How's it going, man? It feels good. It feels good to do the air guitar over here. You know, I, I'm glad to be back and do this. In, in, uh, and, you know, it's, it's nice to have the stresses of, of a wedding and the relaxation of a honeymoon over, and now I can focus on the important things in life, and that is reviewing the Monday Night Wars. Exactly. We, we kind of came back into this with uh, no... I think we were both on the, like, like a, a fevered pitch knowing that we were going to talk about giant haystacks, a.k.a. the Loch Ness Monster, I making t- making his debut at WCW. You know, it was kind of amazing. I went ahead and... So, full disclosure for anybody out there, um, as you know, we kind of went through that whole marathon recording um which by the way apologies to uh tom brady i thought you were gonna you know had that come from behind victory in the super bowl i was close but missed that uh roman reigns you uh were second place in your matchup as well and ronda rousey showed up but did not win the women's royal rumble so i was over three but i was like i, I was like right there in all you you were scratching at each one of them i mean well let's put it this way you you had a 50 50 on the super bowl so <laughs> you're either did. wrong or you're right to be fair though i said tom brady was going to come back and win it in the fourth quarter at the end and he had a chance so it was as he close did, as he, you could be in a wrong prediction i guess i i, I know I, I got you now I, I i totally get it um one other uh disclaimer before we, as as you know, we're back. It's it's the February 12th edition of Just Nitro this week, uh, as Raw will be preempted for the Westminster Dog Show. Uh, full disclosure, I actually watched this episode the night before my wedding. It's, you know, as a way for me to kind of calm the nerves and uh, get ready for the big day. You know, how do I help myself sleep? I'm going to pop in the Nitro and watch it. So I, I watched the Nitro then. I took all my notes then. I've not gone back and rewatched it, so... If there's something a little fuzzy there, Kyle, I hope you can kind of, yeah, you know, pick up the uh, slack for anything that may have slipped my mind or anything like that. Oh, you know, one of the things that I I, I definitely uh, enjoy, and that is uh, calling you out when you're wrong. So I'm I'm definitely all about it. All right, perfect. Well, then let's just get into it, Kyle, because we are live from a seasonably cold Tampa, Florida, um, and George Steinbrenner's here. I guess that's worth worth mentioning. It must be. I'm assuming spring training. Maybe the Yankees are down there. For, for spring ball and uh, George old Georgie boy thought he'd uh, catch an episode of Nitro. I get it, and also I didn't know that that you know I know that catchers and pitchers I think like uh, they report in like two weeks as far as now. So I maybe before maybe ten years or twenty whatever years ago like they reported earlier. It just seems like it's a strange thing to do it now. It, maybe he's just maybe he just lives down there. That's a summer house, or for whatever fucking reason he decided I'm gonna go watch a. Uh, post Super Bowl episode of Nitro. I think he does I think he did own the uh, the Tampa I think it's called the, the Tampa Fairgrounds or Country Grounds whatever wherever they were at I believe just it's it it belongs to his family. Ah, well, that wouldn't surprise me. He has a lot of money. Um Pepe of course Kyle is rocking an ascot glasses and headphones and my notes I I wrote in there he has no idea what's happening backstage. Was that something Mongo said or is that something totally in regards to something else that I don't have details on, I uh, I think the whole point of of uh, Pepe was that he was wearing all that stuff because like he was wearing the headphones because he he wanted to know what was going on in the back. Uh, it's like okay. he he had That's matching head he had That's matching was... headsets like the rest of them. And fortunately for him, as we go later on the show, probably the only set of heads of headphones that didn't get destroyed. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and Kyle, there's a lot of recapping here at the beginning of the for you know obviously Super Bowl was yesterday, but they spent a, a, a long period of time I thought, kind of discussing everything. They mentioned Sting and Lex Luger still tag team champions, surviving of course Harlem Heat and the Legion of Doom. I mean the Road Warriors at Super Bowl. Um, Ric Flair is now a 13 time world champion. Savage has a high heel axe to grind because apparently high heels are. Uh, going to be the finish for all matches now as uh, miss elizabeth turned heel if you will if you um, will the night before 
And Johnny B. Bad is six million dollars richer as he beat DDP and uh, retained his title and Kimberly the Diamond Doll, as well as won DDP six million dollars. So, did you have a to- problem with the way they explained that? Like, there was not even like one even inkling of an, of, of an explanation of why he's six million dollars richer. I think that was well. I I watched Super Bowl and they discussed it there. I mean, DDP. I think the reason he his gimmick is he's like this rich Vegas like gambler. So I think that was his like. Vegas winnings or something like that. So, like, that was how they explained it back when. Uh, Probably on main event or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then that's uh, where that's where all the t- that's where all the big titles change exactly, hands. Apparently, right? Um, you wouldn't know anything about the TV title on Nitro at this point. True. Of course, Kyle. Lots of people are discussing the respect match. Which, if you saw the respect match, you would know Brian Pillman uh, left the match before it began. Arn said he was going to come in and replace him. Ric Flair came in. To mediate it, the match doesn't happen, but everybody's talking about it anyways. Yeah, I, I mean, mostly, nothing to say about that. I just thought that it was funny that that was something that they had. Like, what everyone, all the buzz is about this match that <laughs> all never happened. All the buzz happened. is about the respect match that did not happen, and it's a shame because you and I both thought it had a very good build up and was kind of starting to tell an interesting story. Now, maybe we're, you know, maybe we haven't reached the end of that, so I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna bury it too much because I think it's buried. I think it's buried because even Bischoff, like I think, makes a, like a mention later on about the three horsemen. I think this is around the time where he does. Uh, Pillman makes his way over to the WWF. Uh, well, we'll have to see. Um, and then, Kyle, we get some still images of Macho Man and Flair match. Of course, this is where Elizabeth is going to give the uh, heel shot, or I think she passes the heel to Flair, and Flair hits Macho with it. Um, Hogan, of course. Uh, Basically, the giant who's been built up as a big monster takes a bunch of leg drops and gets cleanly pinned by Hogan. And then Hogan uh, ends up taking on the entire Dungeon of Doom by himself. So Hogan is now the superhuman of all superhumans, uh, taking them all on. And then there's the debut of the Loch Ness. This is the uh, you know giant haystacks you mentioned. He comes out at Super Brawl, but he does not get into the ring. They're saving Hogan and Giant haystacks or Loch Ness as they're calling him for another day Kyle so now apparently the giant is no longer the big man in in, in WCW we got a new big man for Hogan to uh bear. we have a, we have another guy for the Zodiac to, to hold back <laughs> um and they they let us know Kyle that Hogan and Arn Anderson are going to have a match tonight and Loch Ness is going to be making his in-ring debut Kyle so we got a lot to look forward to that's all the recapping that they did for us let's get into it now uh, our opening bout, Hugh Morris versus Macho Man Randy Savage. And the, the commentary team lets us know, Kyle, that this would have been a world title match uh, here on Nitro had Macho not lost the uh, night before. Why? Which is not sh- – which is not – well, no, wait, first of all, you shouldn't be shocked about that. They they, no, they pretty I, much – they pretty no, much no, defend no, no, no. it's I, know, I understand it's, that I'm not Hugh Morris that, should not be getting it. Well, exactly. That's my point <laughs> is, is Macho Man – yeah, he's defending whoever's the world champion. Apparently, it, it should be the TV championship because it is defended every week on Nitro. Um, so that from that aspect, Macho Man defending it, not a big deal. Why the fuck would Hugh Morris be considered the number one contender? I think the more important thing to ask is, who is Hugh Morris' uh, – like, I, I know who his manager is, but I guess the same – I guess <laughs> that is a question. How, how dare – even if Hugh Morris earned a world title shot just because Flair is the champion, I feel bad for Hugh Morris. He should have gotten his world title shot. <laughs> That's a fair point. Uh, that said, he doesn't. Um, they do let us know, Kyle, that Macho Man will be getting his rematch next week against Flair. So we're going to have a world title match next week on Nitro. So that'll be a big deal, I guess. So I think it's like match number four of Flair versus Macho in the past like four weeks, yeah, seems like. Much, and almost every time for the title. If not every yep. time, um, Savage is visibly irritated and kind of annoyed. Kyle, he very serious look on his face in this match. Well, even uh, even Mongo said something like, "You know, no hat, no glasses, no pomp and circumstance," which I thought was hilarious because pomp and circumstance was playing yeah, when he right. said no pomp and circumstance. So classic Mongo. But yes, uh, Macho did look quite nettled. Yes, uh, that is your vocab word of the week. Uh, fans so nettled look it up it is what macho man was in this match against hugh morris um good news kyle that baywatch episode remember the one where uh macho man was uh bench pressing in the beach and then flair taskmaster sullivan yeah sullivan came around and attacked him way back this was like might have been september and started a feud back then uh that air that episode was finally going to air so good to see that 
um, still happening. And uh, this, the reason we're not discussing the match at all, Kyle, because there wasn't much to it. Um, eventually, uh, Hugh Morris is going to go for his patented moonsault. Uh, he's going to miss. Macho Man's going to hit an elbow drop. He's going to go back up for a second elbow drop. He's going to get the one, two, three count. Um, this wasn't much of anything, Kyle. I'll give it a star in three quarters. What about you? Uh, I gave it a star in three quarters. I was just kind of surprised that we didn't, we usually either see, uh, either like Macho Man, like, you know, uh, going with a flurry of offense or he's like the, the face in peril the whole time. This was definitely not either one of those. This was a lot of back and forth, a lot of, uh, it just seemed like, I wouldn't say no selling because that wasn't very, I, I wouldn't say that that would be kind of disingenuous to say that, but I would say that neither side really like took advantage for a long period of time. But I would, I would, I would probably lean this more towards a squash, uh, for Macho. I but, agree. Yeah. But I, I, th- I think it felt like the, the first like three minutes or four minutes of it was just kind of both of them kind of raking the eyes, a couple punches. And then towards the finish, it seemed like Macho was kind of, he was taking advantage except for, you know, the, the opportunity where Hugh Morris had a chance to moonsault. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, uh, you know, no one, no one thought Hugh Morris was going to win this cleanly. I actually thought that maybe, uh, especially when he was going for that second elbow drop, I thought maybe the dungeon was going to come in and, you know, just be the dungeon to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, uh, I was actually very surprised that he hit two elbow drops and almost was going to go for a third and there was no dungeon of doom members to be seen. Yeah. So like you allude to Cal, he does go back up after for a third elbow drop. Uh, the referee does get in the way and kind of stops it, and Savage realizes that he wants Flair, and Hugh Morris is just uh, an unfortunate bystander uh, into the path of fury. Um, and Mongo says that they should take the shock; they, they need to take the shock collar off the Doberman here. So that's what we've got going there, Kyle. Um, Savage is angry, so we'll have to see how he uh, fares next week against Flair. After this, Kyle, we get Mean Gene, of course, a hard-hitting interview with, with Steve Grissom. Are you asking who Steve Grissom is? Well, he's the uh, NASCAR driver for the WCW car. Um, I thought he was really boring. Uh, I thought this was just a waste of time. Uh, He basically says the car looks good. It looks awful good. And Sting's going to be as part of the pit crew. Kyle, uh, you seem to think he was pretty good on the mic. Uh, Look, I, I, as soon as I saw who he was and what, and, I don't know what Mean Gene was doing lowering his standards to interview. If the guy's not Flair or Hogan, I feel like he's like, I don't give a shit. But uh, no, I thought Steve Grissom was fine. I thought he I thought he had he gave the appropriate amount of enthusiasm for a race car driver. Um, he wasn't he wasn't monotone. He was just like, yeah, I'm excited. And the car looks good. Like it didn't seem like he fumbled. He did. a He, he did a better promo than Lex Luger does. So I, I had at least had to give him that credit where I, I at least uh I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you. He didn't fumble through his words or anything like that, but I thought he had about the personality of Diana Smith. Oh no, 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 no! Diana Smith is on a whole other level. No, no, Steve, give Steve Grissom, you know, credit where it's due. He, I felt he at least was. It was a, it was a regular interview. It was fine. Like, I, I, I don't think it was bland. I don't think it was over the top. He wasn't like, let me tell you something, brother. As soon as you and I meet at Daytona Beach, brother. Like, no, it wasn't like that. But he, he. But he also wasn't like just there being like, yeah, well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And everything's good. I think he had a little bit of energy to it. So and it was short. He, you know, they gave him about two minutes. That's enough time. Let's move on. I don't I don't I don't think that the, the show was any better or worse. Uh, it's just worth noting. Steve Grissom never finished. Uh, he finished with 11 top tens in his NASCAR. Uh, oh, that's his NASCAR World Truck Series, uh, his NASCAR Cup Series, 18 top tens. Uh, zero wins and as far as his time with wcw um where was it i had it right here i lost it uh it looks like he doesn't race oh here we go uh he started in 96 off on a high note winning the season opening bush series race driving the wcw car but he was released from diamond ridge after the miller 400 raceway midway through the season so steve grissom is not long for uh this this gig uh driving the wcw car hey longer than the yeti (laughs) <laughs> True that. Um, and probably longer than this following match, Kyle, which is going to be Scotty Riggs versus the Loch Ness, of course, accompanied by Jimmy Hart. Um, the match is basically Scotty Riggs does four or five drop kicks trying to knock Loch Ness over. He does a couple of them off just off the ropes, a couple of them like missile drop kicks off the top. 
Finally, he goes for a top rope cross body, uh, which of course Loctis cleanly grabs him and uh, drops him down. And by that, I mean he literally just like slips and drops him onto the ground. It was a terrible botch spot. Um, like he was a grease pig or something. Yeah, he like he like he just was supposed to catch the guy and just can't catch him. Well, not uh, only did he not catch him, like I understand you know, if you I actually would have loved it if he just went for a cross and body kind of it. and he just bounced off of him. Yeah. But instead like he tried to catch, he didn't catch, he lost his balance and then like landed like knee first into his stomach. Yeah. Like oh like, like dude, you're a almost 700 pounds man if I don't care if you're if you mess up something, you can't you can't botch if you're a 700 pound man. That's dangerous to do because if you just oh, yeah, accidentally absolutely. fall on somebody, you could crush some ribs. Um, well, he follows it up with a couple just elbow drops and uh, is going to get the three three count in a quick squash here, Kyle. This is a one star match for me. It was a bad squash match with with uh, botches. I agree. You had there was there was one spot that that uh, I can't really want to say giant haystacks. That's how I know him more. But uh, Loch Ness, he had basically one spot good spot for him to make himself look good he screwed it up it made the match do bad do uh, made it just look really bad the commentators did the best they could to sell it um i knew that was this wasn't going to be a good match and i expected nothing from it i feel like if he at least caught the crossbody cleanly and you know had like a cool looking power slam i would have given this maybe a star and a half star and three quarters but because you had one big spot and you totally botched it that's why it's a one star i agree uh after this kyle mean gene is going to um Actually interviews somebody worthwhile. He's got woman, Miss Elizabeth, and they're out with a stretcher. Um, Miss Elizabeth says it may have taken them all night, but they put, finally put Flair in a gurney. So apparently Flair's having a little little three-way action here with woman and Miss Elizabeth. And up he pops in a full suit on the gurney with the title, Kyle. He's strutting with the women. He's talking about how they were riding Space Mountain. Um, and then the... Uh, Women get on there. Miss Elizabeth basically says for seven years she said nothing, and now she's taking it all from Randy, of course, referring to their, you know, their divorce, and now she's took, even taken the title from him. So she's a complete harlot at this point. And then she kind of stumbles and forgets her lines, and Flair's kind of helping her remind her where she was supposed to be. Uh, and that's basically she, you know, she, 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 she's been out of it for a while. Like I, I let it go. I, I understood that's what she was doing, but I feel like – Flair did a good job of 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 catching it really quickly. He did. He and, did absolutely. And she and 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 then in her in her defense, she did get her. She did remember her lines she again. And she finished she it. Did. Yeah. Yep. She hulked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after that, Kyle, we did an encore promo for Super Bra, and then we get the debut of Dangerous Devin Storm. He's going to be wrestling Conan. Um, of course, they they refer to him kind of like a suicidal kind of uh, wrestler, if you will. He looks like if he looks like if one two three kid and the hurricane had like an illegitimate child together, and Conan. When I saw the picture that they had for him, I'm like, is that Rico Suave? <laughs> like I don't, I didn't, I didn't remember. And then the other thing that was weird about that is that that's the picture they gave you of Conan, but then the guy you got coming out of the ring did not look like that at all. <laughs> right. Like it's the, like no they just Rico have old Suave. promo pictures, and they're like, ah, just post it, whatever. Like seriously, like he looked like he was from a reggae band, and then he comes out like in like a look, looked like like a pink cloth football uniform, and with a mask. Like it was just so all over the place. I wasn't I wasn't ready for Conan to look what he looked like when I actually saw him coming down from the ring because I was still getting used to Rico Suave Conan, and then we get like Lucha Libre without a mask Conan. It was just it was so it was so bizarre. Uh, that it was, Kyle. Uh- of course, the match starts out. Uh, Devin Storm brings a chair into the ring to use as a prop to kind of uh, help elevate himself uh, for a spot, and the ref's fine with it. You know, bringing illegal objects into the ring. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, Kevin Sullivan gets DQ'd for holding a belt uh, in the ring and not using it. He gets DQ'd, but someone actually legitimately brings in a chair and uses it as a prop, and that's totally fine. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then uh, this is where you actually do see George Steinbrenner in the crowd, Kyle. Um, they're, they're beating on each other like yesterday's stepchildren. Of course, that's a classic Mongo right there. And I had to laugh, Kyle. At one point, Bischoff comments, of course, if you remember, the power went out during the, uh, taping last week, and it was a little, little odd segment. And there must have been some comments going around that WCW joked that the WWF basically sabotaged them and cut the power and kind of made that thing. Well, Bischoff gets on here and says, uh, the viewers shouldn't take it too seriously when they joke about the WWF. Uh, being the reason for last week's power outage, so I was wondering if there's like a uh, like some sort of outrage or backlash from this, and he's trying to like 
sort of uh, t- try to take a couple steps back, like, oh, guys, we weren't trying to slander anything, buddy, just making light out of it. Did you know? I feel that? like I feel like there had to have been because if there wasn't, I don't think Bischoff would have wasted his breath. Right. If, like I, I think he only would have said shit like that if there was unless like if there was like a a legality behind it, like where he felt like he had to in order to save face with the com- with the with T. Well, I'm sorry, TNT and you know the higher ups. Right. Um, and this, Kyle, is where you're, you're referring to the fact where they make the comment about Arn Anderson and Hogan are going to be wrestling from the four horsemen, but Bischoff kind of says something about it more like the three horsemen. So this is where you're you're kind of assuming that that meant uh, you know Pillman may, may no longer be wrestling there. I feel I feel like it would make more sense that if, if he's made the decision that he's going to go to the WWF. That if he had a card, if he had a match that meant nothing because he's no longer being a part of it, have him show up to the to the to the you know to the pay per view, then be the you know don't show you know or like basically don't go into the match and then have just the show kind of just go on without him. I actually think it was the right move. If you if you, if he's going to go on to another company, why would you continue the story? Just let it die. And let, let it die on pay per view, I guess. Right. I know it kind of sucks that you and I, like I said, you and I were kind of looking forward to it. Not not many times do you and I think like, oh, you know, a respect match. That's a strap match. That seems like something I'd watch. Like that hardly ever actually happens. Never. So almost never, yeah. Yeah. Also, did you uh, notice in this match that uh, I know as we go back to talking about it, uh, this is the first time we've seen Devin Storm as far as, far as I know. I mean, at, at the very mm-hmm. least, definitely on Nitro. Yes. Well, um, they, they say it's the debut of him, anyways. Which is funny because the one of the spots that he tried doing, uh, which was on the outside, he grabbed the five thousand pound steel steps and uh, gets them set up. He puts Conan on a chair, still no DQ yet, and he uses the the stairs as a catapult to like I guess like do like maybe a hurricane run or something like that. He kind of like jumps up on his shoulders. Um, Conan catches him, and instead of him doing a uh, like a hurricane run, he just drops him for like a like a power bomb under the uh, under the padding on the outside. And Bischoff said he read the book of Devin Storm. He knew exactly what Devin Storm was going to do, which I thought was very funny based on the fact this is Devin Storm's debut on the, <laughs> on the company. Right. And they've never wrestled each other. Like, I don't know how many uh, videotapes there are of Devin Storm matches that Conan could grab real quick before his he, match. He must have looked at that indie work, you know? I guess so. He was, but he was, he was ready for it. And I guess Bischoff wanted to give, uh, give Conan the, uh, the credit he was due. Uh, it, Conan is ultimately Kyle going to win this match uh, after he reverses a top rope Frankenstein into a power bomb. Uh, I gave it two stars. It was uh, it was fine. I thought as far as match, it wasn't anything spectacular. Uh, Devin Storm's going to be probably be pretty forgettable, but um, it was okay. What'd you think? Uh, maybe I gave this a lower rating than it deserves. I'm usually on the other side of that. Usually, you're a little bit more uh, uh, stickler to to right. things. I gave this a star and a half, and the main reason why was because, like I said, the whole – I think it's more the chore- – not even the choreography. The commentators didn't give a shit about this match. Um, the Some of the moves – I feel like Conan did his best to give, I think, unique and original offense that I think it just did not resonate with anybody who was watching the show in Tampa. Uh I don't know. Like it just seemed like no one really cared, and it might have just been because if it wasn't for Conan, every once in a while pandering to the crowd, the crowd did not pop at all for anything that was halfway exciting in the match. Uh, and the other thing I had to laugh at was um, uh, Devin was putting Conan up on the top turnbuckle to go for the Frankensteiner, but first he delivered two of the lamest kicks <laughs> ever that I've ever seen. They were like, really bad. Like you know, usually like when. You put somebody on the top rope and you like might like, you know, punch him a couple times to get him dazed so you can go to the top rope. But instead, he did like this, like literally like, lifted his leg up like in like the slowest fashion and just gave him like two little nudges to the side of the body with it with a couple kicks. And then the thing I could not understand and I thought was the funniest thing. And I think I the reason why I gave this such a low score was after Conan won. Penzer goes, you know, your winner and still the United States champion, which leads me to assume that Devin Storm got a U.S. title shot on Nitro as his first debut match. And I'm like, they didn't bill it as a title match. So, but it was a title match or else Penzer was just speaking off script, which he shouldn't be doing. He has a card in front of him that he just says what he's supposed to say. So I can only assume this was a United States title match. The commentators did not at all stress it. They are not billing this goddamn title, and I think the reason why I gave this such a low score was because, once again, it's another United States 
you know, something involved in the United States title where this is like completely just in the background, hardly ever mentioned. I can't stand what they're doing with the United States title. It will get better one day, Kyle, but it's not anytime soon. Uh, after this match, we're going to get our main event, Kyle. Arn Anderson joined out by a woman. Uh, okay, versus- hold on. Stopping you right there. And the only reason why I, I don't know if you saw my notes. Did you also hear that Penzer also said, coming down to the ring, representing the Dungeon of Doom, Arn Anderson? <laughs> Penzer was not on his game this week. Penzer, well, it, look, it's either he wasn't on his game or the guy that wrote his goddamn cards was not on his game because i i first i heard it i'm like representing the dungeon of doom and i'm like wait what and i had to like rewind it back 15 seconds and listen to it again i'm like they totally just said that Arn anderson's a member of the dungeon <laughs> of doom which is egregious yes, like it's very bad. Arn has never been in any stable other than the four horsemen and he's probably i mean obviously outside of flair but honestly there is a there is an argument that can be said that Arn anderson is the four horsemen even more than Flair, because Flair by himself, Flair is fine by himself. Yeah, but I Arn, mean, Arn I think... Anderson is the Four Horsemen because that's his whole career is symbolized by the Four Horsemen. Whereas Ric Flair, yeah, he was a member of the Four Horsemen, but he's not going to be. He yeah, had but, such a big career outside I mean, of that that he's you know. I don't disagree with that end of it, but I still think Flair is the Horseman. But I, I can understand where you're saying that Arn is as much the Horseman as Flair is, anyways. Uh, but yes, he's not Dungeon of Doom material by any means. Uh, the match itself, Kyle Hogan basically wrestling like the heel again in this. Uh, he does his uh, standard six count punch in the corner, uh, bites the head. Um, at one point, he takes the tape that he had, I think, wrapped around his eye or head or whatever, and I think it was a wrist. I think it was wrist tape. Was it his wrist tape? And yeah. strangles Arn Anderson with it. Um, and then, I mean, and then the ref uh, turns around like he's going to notice it, and so Hogan throws it, and then just blatantly chokes him anyways <laughs> afterwards. Like, oh, man, I don't want him to catch me using this object to choke him. Here, I'll just choke him with my hand. And Bobby Heenan is just straight calling him a heel, basically, in this and saying that he's doing all this and has done it for a long time. And I got to say, I agree completely with Bobby Heenan at this point. Like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here that Heenan and I are on the same page that Hulk Hogan is a heel, and you people need to stop cheering him on. Yeah, no, no, it was a great rant. I loved it. It was, it was definitely something that I, you and I have both been thinking this entire time. That I don't, I don't understand like what everybody sees in Hogan other than the fact that he panders to the crowd a lot. His music is upbeat. It's all about the red, white, and blue. But once you got him in the ring, like I mean, that guy uses every he's, you know shorthanded tactic tactics. that he can find. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's wrestling like a chicken shit heel. I mean, in many ways. With the, the only way he's not right now, Kyle, is he's typically not winning matches due to interference or like a chair shot or something like that. But I, I mean, tell that, it to me. He did use the spike still, to beat him. I was going to say he used the spike before and he's used the dick knuckles before. So maybe not. Maybe he he's a fucking heel. Um, the, the match itself, I actually thought like at one point, I think Hogan does like a side suplex. He does an atomic drop at one point. He did a slingshot. I'm like, what? This is like not typical Hulk Hogan like Arsenal. I was. Oh, and the reason why here's the reason why, and and I agree. Like this is not something we're used to. This is what heels do. Heels, and you and I have talked about this too. The the whole point of the heel is the heel controls the pace of the match. The heel is usually the one that actually does a lot of the moves and keeps the face down in peril. He was doing that. He basically squashed, uh, uh, Arn for like seven minutes. And with actual wrestling, and that's usually when you're the heel in peril, or you're in the face in peril, you're 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 fighting back, you're doing the punches, you're doing the hulking up, while the heel is doing the moves and keeping you down on the ground, and you know that kind of stuff. This is this gave him an opportunity to show off his wrestling. Uh, you know, when he was young, I've seen old like like you know young Hogan. He was actually a very athletic, very good wrestler before he didn't need to be anymore, and. Or then he started like just bulking up and just being one gigantic chest muscle, but it was it was interesting. But once again, I think it's because he is wrestling like a fucking heel, and this is what heels do. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, eventually, uh, Ric Flair and Liz are going to come out, and uh, Mongo makes a comment, Kyle, which you called out that uh, he says we got enough heels out here to start a shoe company. So good one, Mongo. 
I think right now, I think I like that one. I think that's my favorite Mongo quote of the year so far. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of all those quotes because I know we're going to give him his reward, his award at the end of the year. Right. So, oh yeah. So so far, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying what he's saying so far. Um, Arn Anderson is going to get a spine buster in here, Kyle, and it's going to lead to a two count, and then it's Hulk up time. Uh, so you get the big boot. Uh, then Hogan does a little strut, a little flare strut, uh, kind of mock, if you will, and he goes for the figure four. So kind of heelish right but i can understand a face doing it um at this point flair's gonna interfere hogan's gonna roll him up for a three count um nick patrick just chilling and letting everything take place at this point woman's gonna then throw uh like baby powder or dust or something in hogan's eyes liz is gonna actually take a heel and hit hogan um this is gonna lead to an arn anderson pin for a three count Arn wins. Nick Patrick let all this interference take place, and then ultimately is going to give the three count. I gave this two stars. This had a potential for, I don't want to say three stars, but at least two and a half for more until this fucking shit ending, Kyle. Uh, once again, I feel like maybe I'm giving this a shittier. I, I think I just came into this being a little bit more cynical because uh, I really had, did not enjoy the show. I gave us a star and three quarters. I might have given it at best a two and a quarter if the if like I said the ending wasn't so horribly choreographed. Because every I always make a point that whenever I see blatant interference, I look to see where the ref is, and the, every single time the ref is staring at the interference happening. He Nick was Patrick, letting this happen. Now maybe he didn't see the heel to the face shot, but like no, I don't think he saw that. I don't but think. The, he did, but honest. the flare interference and like. I was waiting for him to count a three count when he when Hogan curled up or rolled up, which, which would have been hilarious. <laughs> well, I, I think once again too, like Nick Patrick saw a woman throw powder in his face, and then the residual powder dust floating all over the ring, right. and he's just like, "Hey, what is that? Did you do something?" Like, come <laughs> on, Nick Patrick, you could do a better job of of selling that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't like the choreography. You know, this was basically, like I said, this is basically a squash match until Hogan slipped on a banana peel and lost. That's kind of how I kind of saw this. Was Hogan was controlling this entire match, uh, even when uh, Arn was, you know, t- you know, working the eye, sort of. Um, like he elbowed him in the chest, and all the and all the comments like, "Oh, he got him in the eye." I'm like, "No, he really didn't." But all right, whatever, move on. Um, it is. Although I will say though, I gotta give it a little bit of credit that we actually saw a pinfall victory on Hogan. Uh, that's a very uh, that does not happen very often. Uh, I'm also already sick of the shoe being the cause of this is two weeks in a row right. now, including the pay per view. So the third time now that that, that Miss Elizabeth's shoe has been the reason for losses. Would you prefer uh, that metal plate that they used last time <laughs> that they couldn't describe what the object ooh, was? You're, oh, you're you're making me. Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> I think I take the shoe. <laughs> so there you go. But, yeah, so yeah, I guess you got me there. But yeah, there's no way this would have been a three star match. Although I, I think you're give, you're thinking that because you're like, holy shit, Hogan's actually doing wrestling moves. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, it was uh, like I said until the ending. I thought it was one of the better wrestling matches that Hogan has been in. I think since you know we started what I watching. You know, you know what? I actually the reason why I think I gave this a low score though is because I think I actually gave the extracurricular and I threw it into the match because I think another thing that I always look at is did this match matter and it doesn't because. Like I said, you know, I know we're I know I know we're going to talk about it next. But as soon as he wins, well, remember he got he got powder thrown at him. He got hit with the heel. He got pinned. This is the time where Arn and Flair should be gloating and celebrating in the ring. Where Hogan's on the outside, like holding his eye. Maybe Macho comes out and you know maybe like comforts him is like you know like trying to recalc. No, Hogan totally just removes all that. Yeah, gets that- up. Beats the, the crap out of both of them. All the lost instantly. Like you said, Hogan immediately – they basically takes Arn and Flair and has them slam heads together, gives them both big boots. Macho comes in with the chair and the ring's cleared. So like instantly the fa- the heels become you know, nothing more than chicken shit jobbers again. You know, like it just it, – it, it, it made the main event not matter at all right. anymore. So so maybe maybe I also gave this a lower score because I think I did kind of bundle – that part of it with the match yeah and maybe that's my fault because normally we try to just look Separate at the match itself the match, so, right but I, I couldn't with this one fair enough um flair's gonna go to the commentary uh table he's gonna t- said you got your ass kicked again hogan which i always appreciate that flair's the only one who can say the word ass um <laughs> heenan basically invites flair to sit down and hang out at the commentary booth with him which uh I'm which he does him. um 
And then Arn gets on there and says he can beat Hogan again. He did it once now, Kyle. He said he can do it again. Um, Hogan's going to come out there, kick Keenan out of the way. Um, all the headsets are breaking. Mean Gene's trying to come over there. He's got some bad audio. See, there's some microphone issues going on. Hogan's going to accept Arn Anderson's challenge. And he says an eye for an eye and a boot for a boot. So we got that going for it. And then uh, he says he steals Savage's line with, oh, yeah. So Savage gets on there. Macho's got to come up with something else. <laughs> so Macho says, helter skelter, ooh, yeah. And uh, Hogan says that Liz made the wrong choice in Pee Wee Herman Flair. So I guess that's a dig on Flair by calling him Pee Wee Herman. Um, told, tells Randy to get that alimony back. And then uh, he steals Randy's helter skelter line immediately after. It says, "Helter." I laugh so much. <laughs> it <laughs> says, <I'm> like, "Dude." <laughs> <laughs> so Randy, poor Randy, Macho. He's got a couple catchphrases, and Hogan immediately says, "Oh yeah." So Randy goes, "All right, helter skelter." Oh yeah. So then <laughs> Hogan gets on there and says, "Helter skelter is Mongo is my witness." <laughs> I think what's weird about Hogan and and Macho is that I feel like they both don't know who should talk last. <laughs> and so like, and they just like say each other's lines. Like they the keep one, saying each other's lines. One's like, uh, or Hogan would be like, "Oh yeah," and Macho would be like, "A double, oh yeah." And then Hogan would get back out there and be like, "A triple, oh yeah." Like <laughs> they just keep going back and forth. Um, that's that's our Nitro, Kyle. Um, what 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 did you think about it? Oh my god! Uh, if it wasn't for commentator Flair, which I think at this point is my favorite Flair, <laughs> is uh, this was a borderline bad to chaotically entertaining Nitro. Like, like I said, we saw Hogan and Macho squash their opponents for the most part. Uh, Loch Ness. Uh, I, I'm already done with Loch Ness Monster. I really hope that we never see him again. I He's think like we the do, but Yeti of like. New like it's not interesting. Him. I right. assume that I assume that Hogan brought him in so he can slam him at some point, and you know, so he'll have like a a cool highlight. But I have no idea. I know I know that I know that Haystack dies like two years from this time. Um, I felt that it was a good effort by Conan and Devin Storm, especially if Devin Storm's his first match on like live television. But it'll go down as a forgettable match. Um, and then like I said that Hogan Arn match was just a bizarre, blatant interference. Uh, like I said, the only silver lining is Flair is amazing. I love Flair so much. And um, like I think we had three headsets that were destroyed. Um, I think my only complaint I had here is that, Hogan, dude, you have plenty of catchphrases. You've been like the top of the mountain, like being the mega face for so long. You don't need to steal Macho Man's catchphrases. You have your own. Yeah, uh, this this Nitro in general was just okay for me. Uh some okay storytelling i guess a little bit going on there but overall not very good matches um it had a potential for a good hogan match but ended like crap so do you think yeah. the reason why they the why it wasn't as good is because they weren't going head to head with raw they didn't feel like they had to like bring their a game even though it was like i said this is the the first show after a pay-per-view so obviously there's a lot of explaining to go a lot of storylines that need to be continued uh obviously we have a brand new world champion uh it just seemed like maybe the reason why they, 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 they could phone it in is because they didn't feel like they had to go up against Raw this week. See, I, I would think at this point in time, you know, it's it's back and forth between, you know, ratings with them. They're very neck and neck. Uh, this would be a time to capitalize. I, I would say, like, this is your time to grab the viewership, grab those Raw viewers who haven't turned tuned in. Now, like, hey, there's wrestling going on over here. I want to check it out. This would be the time to show them good stuff and set up for some good shit next week. Now, they mentioned there's a world title match, but, you know, how invested are you in, in Savage and Flair right now if you just tuned into this into this Nitro? Like, there, there wasn't much between the two of them. It was more Hogan and Flair. So, I don't know. I, I think they could have done better for that. Um, to your point, though, Kyle, uh, Raw was preempted for the Westminster Dog Show. Uh, I just want to let you all know that Clussex Country su- uh, Sunrise uh, won Best in Show. Which, uh, by the way, sounds like a, a horse name yeah, and not like it, the it name really of a does. dog. He was a uh, clumber spaniel. I don't even know what that means. I've never heard that breed before, but there you go for the Westminster Dog Show of 96, Kyle. Uh, who won the war this week for you? <laughs> Uh, I mean, if we look at the if we look at the ratings, the Westminster Dog Show won <laughs> over well, Nitro. For for what it's worth, um, 
we'll go into the into the Nielsen ratings. Nitro gets a three point seven, Kyle, which is up from a two point nine last week. So they really, I mean, they basically took, I would say, majority of of both viewers this week. Uh, so th- those were some of the highest numbers we've seen yet, and it just shows you that wrestling's really starting to kind of go on the rise here with this with the Monday Night Wars. Um, as for the Westminster Dog Show, it does pull a 4.0, but that's over two nights. So you figure it's, uh, they probably got like a two, 2.0, uh, against Nitro and then like a 2.0 the following night or, you know, give or take. So, uh, really, I wonder, Nitro- I, wonder, I wonder how many people who were, who turned on the channel to watch Raw and saw that the Westminster Dog Show was on and they just kept it on. <laughs> uh, uh I, who knows? I'm sure there's a few out there. Um, that's it, Kyle. Next week, we will, uh, be back for the february 19th editions of nitro and raw raw will be back we'll have the follow-up to to in your house six so if you guys uh want to go check those episodes out and we will be back getting right back into it doing our recording and uh if you haven't subscribed to us on itunes or google play what are you waiting for get over there hit the subscribe button leave us a you must have a you rating. must have a screw loose as mongo would say <laughs> you, <laughs> you got uh rocks for brains uh, give us a follow. We're on uh, we're on a social media account. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, you know, did you think the Westminster Dog Show did did Klusix Country Sunrise Sunrise deserve to win this week or not? And of course, you could always go to MondayNightTours.com for all of our social media accounts, all of our past episodes. If you haven't caught up, if you guys are a little behind, um, you know, maybe you had a vacation or something and you missed some of your episodes. Go back, watch them. We're we're still recording and we'll still be here. Uh, each and every week breaking down the Monday Night Wars. For Kyle Hogan, I'm Josh Kaiser, and we will see you next time on the Monday Night Tours. The C stands for commitment. See you later. <laughs>